Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the FMS 1400mm F4U Corsair. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS who sent me this Corsair for review. I also want to let you know that as of November 2023, FMS will have a pretty large Black Friday event. There are links in the description for this particular Corsair if you'd like to buy one for yourself, as well as the Black Friday event going on at FMS during November of 2023 when this video was originally published. Thanks to FMS for sending this Corsair for review. Let's get into it. First, we'll cover the specifications. The wingspan on this model is 1400 millimeters or 55.6 inches. The overall length is 1240 millimeters or 49 inches. The flying weight is around 2440 grams. The motor is a 540 kV 4250 brushless, spun by a 70 amp ESC and a 5 amp BEC. Regarding servos, there are six 17 gram Metal Gear Digital and two 9 gram servos. FMS recommends a six channel radio. The center of gravity is 90 to 95 millimeters. The prop size is a 14 by 8 by 4 with individual prop blades. We'll cover that during the first look. FMS recommends a four cell 2600 milliamp hour 25C battery. You've got full house control, that's aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder, in addition to flaps and retracts. The approximate flying duration is six minutes, and the experience level on this plane is intermediate. FMS says the assembly time should take about an hour. We'll see about that. On these first look videos, I also like to give a look at how things are packed so you see what FMS does at the factory to make sure your model arrives in good condition. I do have to cop to the fact that I already opened that horizontal stabilizer just to get a look at the paint. So you notice the bag isn't sealed on the end. That's my fault, not their fault. It was sealed when I got it. But anyway, that's a look at how the model comes out of the factory. And they do a very good job using styrofoam and compartments to separate all the pieces to ensure your model arrives undamaged. All right, let's take it out of the box and see what's inside. First up is the manual. This is a typical FMS manual, black and white paper copy, and I noticed this one only English, and the instructions look a little bit more stepwise. So they have step one, step two, step three, and they really walk you through each step of the way. And I also notice there are a lot more parts in this one than a normal plug and play model from FMS. So we get a little spoiled, I think, with how complete these models can be. And this one's got a little bit of a parts package. So you're gonna be screwing on control horns and clevises and little plastic cover beauty pieces, the prop stickers, you know, there's some screws and some parts in here you're gonna have to work on. So that explains why the manual has a little bit more steps than normal, but it covers everything you need to understand regarding the assembly, including the prop and the four blades there and where your center of gravity is. So it's a, the manual looks effective to me, just be aware English only in this one. Here a look at the four blades of the propeller. And again, these screw onto the back plate with the little bullet nose up front to hold everything together. And here are a couple little beauty covers. I'm not exactly sure where they go on the plane just yet, but beauty covers nonetheless. There's a look at the bullet nose and the back plate for the propeller. That's what holds those four blades together. Only two small spar tubes because of the gull wings. You don't have a long tube that goes through the fuselage like most other models you're used to. And this one, just two little small spar tubes right there. The FMS Corsair also has some nice armaments if you want to add those. So a couple of missiles and it looks like drop tanks. And they actually go through some level of detail on the drop tanks. So this part clips onto the wing and they've got a nice little steel spring mechanism that holds onto the drop tank. So very nice, very actually looks very scale. It's kind of cool looking. So a couple of little drop tanks if you want to add those. Next up are the wings. And of course the wings on the Corsair are the star of the show. So we'll just take a look down the leading edge first and I'm looking for any defects in the paint or in the EPO or molding and I don't see anything. It looks very clean there. And then on the trailing edge, what's really fascinating about this one are the flaps. I've never had a Corsair with flaps, but the way these work is that they're EPO hinged Remember I mentioned in the hardware bag, you have to put your own control horns on. So there's where the control horns are for the flaps and for the ailerons and of course the control rods, they have to go on the servos. Most of the hardware is laid in. You just have to connect up the surfaces. And then back to the flaps real quick, when you articulate these flaps, there's a small little plastic piece in between the gull wing segments right there. And that's what keeps everything working together when you bring those flaps down. So very cool effect that we have functional flaps on a Corsair. Not all the Corsair options out on the market incorporate flaps. So I think that's actually kind of cool. And then here's the rack for the drop tanks. 
And then the landing gear actually have doors. So the landing gear rotate 90 degrees and they fold flat into the wing and they're covered by some doors. And I did want to show you the servo retract, which actually stands proud of the wings. So it's not flush with the base of the wing. It stands up maybe about a half an inch. There are a handful of wires for connection to the fuselage and they will include items like the flaps, the gear, the aileron, and the LED nav lights. So all your connecting wires to the fuselage are right here. Overall, I'd say regarding the fit and finish, the only comment I would have is that EPO hinges on this one. So just be aware of that. If you watch my channel, you know how I feel. If you're gonna fly a plane for any period of time, over time, it's a good idea to cut these free and install CA hinges. I know some of you like to use Blenderm, that's fine. Blenderm tape works as well. But if you don't wanna tape up your model, the next best option is to cut these free and use CA hinges. I would just prefer mechanical hinges rather than EPO. That's just the way I am. And then the only other issue I saw in terms of quality is that the retract servo stands proud of the bottom of the wing right there by about a half an inch. Next up is the starboard wing. We'll just take a quick look at this one for QA purposes. There's a look at the leading edge, which looks very clean. There are a couple of plastic inserts on the wing, one right here at the root, and then another one out here for machine guns. And then there's an LED landing light right there, in addition to the nav light out here on the wing tip. But the wing looks beautiful. I don't see any defects in the workmanship here at all. Another little call out I'd make that I didn't notice on the port wing is that when you articulate the flaps, there's no paint down there in the, in the seam, contrasted with the aileron where you, when you articulate that, there is paint down there on the seam. The trailing edge looks very good. I don't see any warps or unusual twists in the foam. So everything looks clean to me there. I don't really see any problems. And then on the bottom, same deal. We've got our gear door. The gear retract stands a little proud of the bottom of the wing. Our inserts for the drop tanks and then our gear doors, our servos for flap and aileron. Everything already installed. So that much looks easy enough. No, no problem there. Next is the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Same deal, EPO hinges back here. Don't forget, before you connect your servos, you do want to flex these a little bit and break those in by hand. And also notice this elevator has two halves that are discreet with control horns that'll be screwed in for both halves, which means there'll be two clevises and push rods on the fuselage to control the elevator, which is fine by me. I like that rather than a torque tube. And then regarding the rest of the build quality, I really don't see anything that stands out. Everything looks fine. It also looks like this is a screw on horizontal stabilizer because there are a couple of holes here. And I looked on the fuselage and there's a plastic capture for the screw. So I believe this is a screw on stabilizer. And uh, there you go. Build quality looks fine on the horizontal stabilizer, no issues. Here's a look at the vertical stabilizer. There is a key up front that goes into the fuselage, a screw hole in the back to lock it down. There's also a key that'll go through the horizontal stabilizer in the back and a hole for another screw there as well. One thing I did notice on this one, if you look at that rudder, there is a little bit of a curve in the rudder. I might try and see if I can work that out with a little bit of weight, but as I looked at the rudder, I can definitely see that there is a little bit of an arc on that rudder. It kind of leans that way a little bit. So this is something I look for on every plane I open, and this one actually has a little bit of an arc. I think it might be curable with a little bit of weight. I'll put some weight on there and maybe even a little bit of heat and we'll see what happens. I don't really think it'll make much of a difference in the flying characteristics, but I am just pointing it out in case these details concern you. Here's a look at the fuselage. And one little anomaly that I noted is that up front, you've got Commander Tex O'Neill. So because that's an officer rank, I assume that's not a maintenance person. So I, my guess would be that that would be the pilot. But then I also noticed that they have a name back here on the cockpit that says Jim Barber, which is a little unusual. If that were say the crew chief or a maintenance chief on this particular squadron aircraft, I would expect to see a rating insignia next to that name because they did do that from time to time. So it's a little odd to me that you've got an officer rank with Tex O'Neill up front and a name Jim Barber on the back. So I'm not sure, maybe there's history there, I don't know. If you do know, leave a comment and share with the rest of us. I had to lift the canopy off, off camera because there is no latching mechanism. And as I examined it, I, it was, the seam was so close, I wasn't exactly sure where to lift it off. There are panel lines all over the place and I had to kind of search for one, but there is no mechanism on this canopy to lift it off. So you'll definitely want to do something like install some tape back here so you can lift it off the fuselage. Just keep that in mind. There's a look at our cockpit with our military pilot, and it actually looks like period correct flight gear. Uh, he looks like he's got a leather jacket on with a leather skull cap, so that actually looks period correct. And then if we look inside the cockpit, you can see the decals 
for the avionics, which actually look kind of cool. And the name of this airplane is the Little Lady, and the name of the squadron looks like it was called the Stingers. Here's a look at the inside of the canopy. There's a little distribution board which will accept wires from the wings. This looks like a door sequencer. Yep, that says gear on there, so that looks like a door sequencer element. The ESC is an 80 amp ESC with an EC5 connector, and the ESC is made by Predator. And remember, this is a four cell setup in this plane. And it looks to me like that's where the battery goes. So you've got the ESC in the same compartment with the battery. They've already laid down some Velcro. So yeah, that looks like a battery compartment and that'll share space with the ESC. I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work out yet. We'll see when I get into the build and I'll let you know. But yep, that looks like the battery compartment and unusually, it looks like it's supposed to share space with the ESC. So a little bit of an unusual layout in this one. We'll see how it goes when we put it together. In the rear of the fuselage, you've got two servos installed for the elevator and rudder. Each one has two connecting rods. So for the rudder, it goes to the rudder and the tail wheel. And then this one goes to the two elevator halves and the servo wires come up to the control board I mentioned earlier. Here's a look at the starboard side of the fuselage and it looks really nice. I think the quality, the paint quality, the decals, all very nicely done on this model. It looks very clean. And here's a look at the port side. And then up front, the motor's already installed, so very simple assembly for the back plate and the prop. No problems there. I certainly hope the plane flies as good as it looks. The only way for me to find that out, though, is to assemble it and put some batteries through it at the field. Keep an eye out on the channel, and I will get that done just as soon as possible. I will get this plane set up and out at the field just as soon as I can, so we can see how it does in the air. Thanks to FMS for sending this F4U Corsair out for review. I'll remind you, don't forget about the Black Friday event, and I'll have an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to pick one of these planes up for yourself. Keep in mind, if you use my affiliate links, the channel is eligible for a small commission that's paid by the seller. It costs you nothing extra to use those links. If you like this kind of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy, and go fly a warbird. And then the only other issue that I saw in terms of build quality was how that retract servo stands proud of the bottom edge of the wing. And then the only other issue that I saw in terms of quality is that that retract servo extends past the base of the wing. And then the only other issue I saw in terms of build quality is the fact that the retract servo stands proud of the bottom half. And the only other issue I saw in terms of build quality or scale appearance is that the retract servo...